Teacher Oakley, today we're going to look at a very controversial topic, and the controversy has begun already in the chat box. Wow. Okay. Uh, David states, if you if you want peace, prepare for war. And we've already got arguments going back and forth already. All right, Groovy, come on into class, and uh, let's get started with these opinions. Um, we're going to talk about opinions to do with 20 or 21st century warfare and how it's being conducted in the world right now. Modern technology and some scary stuff that's going on as we speak. Um, what are your views about some of these things? Some of these things, I'll tell you, I, very controversial and I don't know if I've made up my mind about some of these things. We'll be talking about drone planes, robot planes. We'll be talking about hacking, computer hacking used as a warfare tactic, really. Um, do people conduct economic war by hacking? A lot of stuff in the news about it recently. China hacking into American corporate corporations and the electrical grid in the United States. Why are they doing that? Um, very controversial. Is this really, is it warfare? Are we at war with China right now in the United States? Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, very uh, interesting, touchy, topical, controversial topic today. So we'll be practicing uh, expressing our opinions in English. No, um, so, okay, uh, Koji, as always, nice to have you. Nice, nice to Hi, have you with me. Hi, how are you? Hello, how are you? Good to see you, too. Okay, yeah, likewise. Uh, okay, hang on. I'm going to give the old hangout a chance to catch up. A lot of people jumping into class. Good. Well, apparently a lot of people want to talk about this. Cause there's a lot of people jumping into class and a lot of viewers. You guys, you might want to get your uh, premium accounts. <laughs> so you can make sure you get into these classes. Um yeah, get you know, make your reservations. Get your reservations, folks, so you don't get left out. Okay. Wow, that that was like the fastest filling up class I've ever seen. <laughs> Kaboom! You guys are like a bomb. Ah, speaking of warfare. All right. Um all right, lots of uh old friends and some new faces. So, I I'm going to be talking to everyone. No worries. Everyone will get a chance to talk. Very interested to hear your opinions about this because actually, I'll be honest, in many of the things we're talking about today, I haven't made up my mind yet. I haven't figured out what my opinion is. Help me, help me teacher. We're going to teach the teacher. Help me figure out my mixed feelings or my conflicted feelings about these topics. Let's uh, let's start with um. Let's start with hacking, okay? Recently in the news, uh, there's been a lot of news about uh, recently they they figured out that uh, there's been a lot of hacking from, for example, from China, hacking into United States actually government offices and also the power grid and um, many hacking into companies that uh, supply or make uh, military equipment, guns and planes and bombs, like, like Boeing and like that. So I want you to think about what is your opinion? Is, is, this, is this actually warfare? Is this morally or ethically okay on any level? Or is this an act of aggression? What do you think, um, Russell? What do you think about this type of thing? I mean, there's hacking which nuts do, and they plant viruses, and they're just—I don't know—I think hacking is crazy. But what do you think about actual, for example, specifically 
there's a Chinese military wing organization. They have their own building, and their job they work for the military, and their job is to hack into American computers. What do you think of this? Mm. It's a tough one. Well, no comments. <laughs> no comment. Okay. All right. That's okay. Uh, reserve comment. I, I don't know what to say either. That's all right. Van, are you there? Hi. Yes. Uh, hi, Van. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Vietnam. From Vietnam. Yep. Okay. Um, now, I know Vietnam has some controversial problems with China yes, right now. Yes, yes. Definitely. Uh, some island. Yes, we, we have uh, some island and the China, Chinese people, you know, they invade just islands from us and uh, then they uh, continue to want, want to uh, invade and other island and um, just that the talks on because we uh, we don't want to fight with Chinese you know, people but um, now is the uh, island with uh, to, uh, to, uh, this very important thing to us uh, so uh, we don't know how how to uh, defend how to protect our uh, um, lands from uh, China. Yeah. Yeah, Van. Actually, I'm I'm quite familiar with this problem yeah. you're discussing, and and I, I I understand your point of view, because I live in the Philippines now. Um, so you may also know that there's Philippine islands that China suddenly is claiming, yeah. Japanese islands. China is being quite aggressive now. These are small islands. Many, some of them are. I think some of the Vietnamese islands are actually inhabited, but. There's many islands in the South China Sea that are even uninhabited. No one has paid any attention for how many hundreds of years. Nobody cares, except now. Whoa, there is... Whoa, what was that? Sorry, air raid, air thought. raid, run away! Okay, <laughs> sorry. No, I'm just kidding. What's calm down. <laughs> Remain calm. If this had been an actual emergency, you would be instructed. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, nobody cares about these islands, and now suddenly um, these islands uh, seem to have natural gas reserves and or oil. So suddenly they're valuable, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a very tricky situation. It, Van, in my opinion, ASEAN, the um, southeastern, there's the Southeastern Asia Organization of Countries, of which Philippines and Vietnam are members. Yeah. I yeah. think uh, ASEAN has to group together to help yeah. sol solve this problem. I, I hope so. I hope so. But China is the one that happened. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. China, that's when it uh, actually happened because they want to uh, to fry <laughs> to to divide them and is that e easy for them? Right. I, I actually I agree. It's in China's interest to keep the southeastern C Asian countries divided, and I think that. Yeah. That's all the more reason to be, you know, not just to, you know, for military reasons, economic reasons as well. Yeah. You agree? I, all right. Yes. You and I can we we can uh, do a little diplomacy, <laughs> grassroots <laughs> diplomacy happening right here. All right. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. I'm with you, buddy. I I I am. I agree with you. Um. Okay. Let's go back to the, you know, China. Is being quite aggressive. The Chinese hacking thing. What do you think about that, Alessandro? What are your uh, views of that? Is that an actual act of war? Do you think? Uh, actually, I was uh, I was uh, uh, thinking about uh, what uh, aspects does ha hacking have. But regarding the Chinese hacking, I don't I don't have much info about what's happening in China. Can you? So I will not be able to give. Uh, 
All right. Well, maybe I can. Okay. All right. Um, hang on a second. Sure. Uh, all right, hang on. Uh, all right. What it is? Okay, this is a. Uh, What it is, uh, this is an actual article here. I'll, I'll share it with you. Okay. Uh, hang on, screen share. A recent article here, and let me, let me make this a lot bigger. Okay. Uh, China hacking. 21st century act of war. All right. Um, all right. I'll read this for you. Uh, I know because the screen is a little blurry, and unfortunately, I I, w I was not able to upload these before the class. There's a small problem with uh, uploading, which I'm sure will be fixed quite shortly. But in any case, uh, here we go. China hacking, 21st century act of war. A brilliant report recently issued by security firm Mendiant. This is a private security firm clearly identified a high-powered unit of the Chinese army as the source of the most persistent cyber attacks against American firms. While the full cost of these attacks may never be calculated, the evidence against the People's Liberation Army, Chinese army, unit 61398 continues to grow. The magnitude of this by invasion of privacy and theft of data is both staggering and lack of any serious response by the US government is damning. Hmm. Okay, so this is actually quite recent news. They've actually tracked the source. Um, many people have made accusations for many years, but they pretty much came in with some very hard evidence that shows directly this hacking is coming from uh, Oh, thanks, Yan. Um, yeah, uh, it's coming directly from a specific building, which is a military compound in China. So pretty sketchy. But uh, but you know, America's not American government's really not doing a whole lot about it. Because, of course, China is a major trading partner. It's weird. Is it an act of war? Is it an act of aggression? Is my question. Um, Camilo. Camilo, are you there? Yes, yes. I'm sorry uh, actually for interrupting, but, but no before problem. Camilo uh, goes with the answer, what does uh -huh. American firms mean? American companies. Okay. And, and if we read further, study a little further, you might see that in fact they they're quite aggressive with. They're not l trying to learn how to make American refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're looking at uh, companies like GE, like Boeing, that actually make and sell arms or weapons in the United States. Okay. So, Thanks, okay. it's clear yeah, now. sure, yeah. Firms, we use firms for companies. Camilo, are you there? Yes, yes, I am. All right, what do you what do you think about this whole China hacking thing? Is is hacking an act of aggression? Uh, well, I think. Well, I have been reading. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh -huh. I'm reading about uh, that kind of. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, and it's interesting, but it's not for now. I mean, they dis uh, they discovered them, but it uh, through the information that I have found says that is just a uh, Tower White is the name Tower White there in Shanghai. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. It's one specific area in Shanghai. That's right. Yes, and the USA, I mean, is trying to to make something against that kind of uh, attack. Well, yeah, abs they are trying to defend. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Sure. But uh, I don't understand what, what is the purpose because uh, 
just says that they are making that kind of uh, attacks since a long time, but with the purpose is not. Well, yeah, okay, purpose can be implied. They can be going after direct um, trade secrets, how to build weapons, you know, actual physical plants. They can also be doing something else, all right? If they can hack into major companies' financial records, secret financial records, for example, it gives them, of course, an enormous advantage in the market. Um, they can invest or choose not to invest. Uh, the government, Chinese government itself, can choose to buy bonds or stocks or inflate their monetary, their currency or deflate, depending on what they see happening with American companies. It gives them an en enormous economic advantage. It, you know, of course. Of course, it would be illegal for me to go in and find out Microsoft's financial, secret financial information or plans for research and development. Of course, if I work for Samsung and I did this, of course I would end up in court. That's illegal. All yes, right? yes, by the, yes, because, for example, Barack Obama says that uh, we know that our uh, companies, I mean, there are people that is trying to get our all, all the information about secrets information yeah and yes yeah, about the financial institution is that the word yeah very good financial institutions very good yeah banks and lending companies they, they are trying to have the control to, about the, all the information right right very scary actually you know, warfare doesn't have, the point of today, what we're talking about, it, it's, warfare has gone beyond just shooting each other with guns. It's, it's much more complicated now, and this is just one aspect of it. Very interesting. As, as well, the fact that they're looking, they're hacking into the power grid, meaning the electrical supply, electrical companies in the United States. Ew, scary. Yes. Very. Yeah, that's right. You don't have to bomb people. If I can shut off the power in New York City for three days, that's going to cause some serious problems. All right. Anyway. Okay. Uh, Dina, how are you again? Fine, thanks. Hi, Dina. What do you? What do you? Do you have an opinion about um, countries you hacking into other? Countries, governments hacking into other businesses, whatever. What do you think of this? Of course, it's illegal, legal action. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that the recent or uh, the new war will depend on uh, spying and hacking, uh, at, and hacking each country, government and secrets and social information. Ah, Something and, like that. and social information, that's also interesting. Yeah, and I don't want to, I'm really picking on China today, but you know what, there's also ample evidence that uh, Israelis and the United States government have engaged in hacking in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Iran, for example, hacking into their n nuclear development programs. So I, I don't I'm not, I don't mean to imply that it's all one way, and I, I think I have, uh, but I should not. Um, this really should should be open. I, I, it's a two way street. I the door swings both ways. I think it goes both ways. Quite honestly, maybe we don't hear what the Americans are doing as much, but I think they're doing it too. Honestly. Yes, but and the countries uh, is not hacking uh, and spying on the the information uh, systems only. Um, it's also the customs and habits and the weakness uh, the weakness points of the of the of the of the of the, of, the, of, the, of a specific country. If you know the weakness points, you have you, um, you know how to control this country. Very good. I think so. Yeah. Very nice. Um, very well put, and I think that's a very good point. Excellent. 
Um, you know, we have the hacking thing. You also, of course, have the satellites now that can, you know, they can follow you around on the street. You know, we can look at Google Maps, you and I. So imagine what the CIA in America can look at. I mean, yes. really, right? Uh, okay. Uh, Eduardo, Eduardo, are you there? Hi. Yes, hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Okay. What do you? What is your opinion about this uh, government-sponsored hacking? Well, I think that there are uh, a lot of uh, interests from countries to hack in another ones because uh, they always wanted to know what the other countries are doing. Mm-hmm. But do you think it's what do you think about the morals or ethics? Morals or well, ethics of uh, of this activity? Well, I think that there's no a good thing, of course. It's a good thing? No, it's not a good thing. Oh, it's not a good thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Sorry. of course, of course. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, it's kind of weird, you know, it's a bizarre conversation when you're talking about warfare and you're talking about ethics and morals. Ah. <laughs> you know, warfare, by definition, has very little morality or ethical behavior attached to it. Uh, very, uh, you guys... Uh, just okay. Uh, English lesson. Do you guys know what an oxymoron is? Do you know this word? Anybody? Yeah. Oxymoron. When we like someone talk just one way. Sorry, Russell. Russell, what was that? Someone just talk one way. Uh, not e not exactly. No. Uh, bittersweet. Okay, thanks, Vian. Good example. Contradicting when we make a phrase or even one word like bittersweet, a compound noun, but the words have opposite meanings. Bittersweet. Um, the military itself is full of these oxy oxymorons. Uh, another, a simple one: jumbo shrimp. Okay. Jumbo means large, shrimp means small, but if I eat in a restaurant in the United States, I can order jumbo shrimp. I bring this up because I, I'm, I'm saying it's very awkward to talk about ethics and warfare. It's kind of an oxymoron. Um, and the military has uses tons of oxymoron. Um, for example, if I'm a U.S. soldier in Afghanistan and I get killed by other... US soldiers I've been killed by friendly fire oh friendly <laughs> fire <laughs> oh yeah little bullets with happy faces carved on each one yeah, w whatever <laughs> they can call it what they want but military military jargon is full of oxymorons because by nature it's contradictory um, any case uh, okay, let's uh, actually, let's talk about another, unless anybody has anything else to say about hacking. Uh, I know I haven't talked to everyone yet, but anybody no, else have no. anything to add? Teacher, teacher yeah. just says that. Uh, <laughs> What's that, Camilo? It's a uh, genius people says that, I mean... There are all issues that you, the Americans were attacking first of all than them. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and everyone always says that. You started it. Actually, it reminds me of, you know, taking uh, trips in the car with my parents and my sister and I would be in the back seat and we'd start fighting. He started it. No, she started it. He did it first. No, she did it first. He touched me first. He touched me first. You know, yes, right. It's yes, very, sure. very childish, actually. Yeah, and that's very common. And in these kinds of things, you get a lot of that when we're, in, you know, 
this kind of discussion. All right, I, I want to. Okay, so all right, we. I think we kind of agree that it it's not very ethical to hack into and steal information. It's stealing, really. So how can you call it ethical? But of course, it's not ethical. It's illegal and it's a criminal act. Okay, I think we could all agree on that. How come countries put up with it? Because there's, I guess, there's nothing they can do. Uh, they can't. I, I think think everyone is doing it. That's why no one is uh, <laughs> just fighting and just secretly stealing information of each other. Every everyone is doing it. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> many yeah. many countries have this program of uh, cyber cyber security. Yeah. The, the cyber environment. They are preparing for the cyber war. Uh, Brazil, United States, Russia, France, uh, China, all of these countries has a, a really big program to protect it from this kind of threat. But I don't think it's possible to protect all. I think uh, a multilateral institution should take care of this. Ah, okay. All right, we've been making a lot of judgments and finally now um, Koji actually going to talk about solutions. Um, nice. Uh, okay, so you think there should be a multinational commission or something of that nature. Similar to uh, global warming, um, what is it called? Kyoto Accord? Something of that nature? Yeah, and similar like, uh, uh, like on the uh, uranium enrichment in, in another organization. Okay. Okay. I yeah. Right. We could. Um, right. Okay. We could throw this to the UN, but we all know how effective the UN is. <coughs> what was? <coughs> oh, sorry. Just an opinion. <laughs> Sometimes the UN it lacks effect. Actually, if you read the UN, um, their uh, what do you call their their bylaws? Actually, by law, the UN has to be ineffective. They're not allowed to interfere in a country, actually. Yeah. So things like civil wars and social unrest within countries, UN can't do anything about that. UN really can't do anything about nuclear development, uranium enrichment. A country has uh, have to protect themselves from uh, the outsider. And, uh, yes, they have to do uh, just Security system. And, um, you know, that's a lot of things to do. But, um, so that China, they have uh, their uh, army unit that's called cyber attack, cyber attack to another country like US or some, something, even uh, Vietnam. Yeah. Really? Even in Vietnam, there's been. Yes, I uh, say they have some uh, website. Our have website, and we we had had them back. <laughs> so that that's something like a, um, a war, cyber war. Yeah, cyber war. Can you? I can't even imagine what would I. Actually, wow. Okay, yesterday, different class. How to become a millionaire? I just had the idea. A full-on cyber war movie, action thriller. Bruce Willis. Cyber Wars. Okay. <laughs> no, Never no mind. No, what? Okay. That would be horrible. I, I would be a profiteer. I would be profiting from a bad situation. That would be make me a horrible person. I don't think I could do that. But but see, uh, some people uh, claims that the cyber war is going to happen and uh, people are not gonna die. So if we have cyber war, all of this kind of drones, uh, robots, uh, mm. and hacking. Uh, why, if people are not going to die, why go to the war? And why not only play a game? Yeah. Who in the game is won everything? Okay. <laughs> like, a, like an economic game, you mean? Yeah. Okay. But there is an implication there. If, uh, for example, today the United States is the powerful uh, 
is is a, is the powerful in the world military. Yeah. But this is this this not cause the United States to overtake all the countries to get all the countries to United States because we have United Nations we have uh, some multilateral organizations who take uh -huh. care of uh, of the, the prayer. Yeah, uh, you know, I we can, and that's another argument. We can, we can argue how much do these multilateral organizations, multilateral meaning many uh, countries involved, how much do they actually accomplish? But uh, actually, you said something else, which uh, prompts me to share this with you. Hang on a second. Um, well, you said that uh, people won't be killed, but let's slightly change. We've been talking about hacking. Actually, let's talk about drones. You guys know what drones are? The drones, yeah. are the robot. No, there, will, there will be our drones like uh, flies and mosquitoes. So there ah. will be a drones in our room you know, uh, after twenty or thirty years, <laughs> like ah. uh, maybe in our bathroom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> scary! <laughs> Better not. Right. Actually, oh wow, that is so frightening. I can't even bring my brain to go there. Um, but more than possible, actually, you know. Actually, talking about um, what's it called? Um, the new technology where they actually have tiny, tiny, tiny little computers. Um, what's it called? Nano nanotechnology. Have you heard of that? Yes. Yeah, they they can actually like you. Um, they can actually like have paint that can change colors or can. Uh, Use tiny cameras to to mock. Yeah, that would be nano ro robotics. Little mosquito robots flying around, flying up your nose. <laughs> oh God. Okay, actually, I, we could talk about that. Very interesting. But first, I want to present this article uh, you, because Koji had mentioned drones. Drones are those robotic planes that they don't need a pilot, and America uses them. A lot. Maybe you might be surprised by this recent article. It's been made public. Just how many people have America's drones killed? Republican Senator Lindsey Graham has put the death toll at 4,700. The first time an American officially has publicly put a precise figure on the impact of strikes by unmanned aerial vehicles. I noticed that he's not saying where. Okay, which is another scary thing. Uh, actually, also recently in the news, this is scary for me. I'm an American. Well, it should be scary for anybody. Um, is that the Americans seem to think it's legal to just go kill whoever they decide is an enemy without any, any court of law, no review, Basically, they decide that you're an enemy, and they can basically kill you anywhere. Um, n and not only you guys, you in Brazil, and you in Vietnam, and you know, you in Turkey, but actually me. I'm an American. I don't live in America. It is now legal for the American military to send a drone to kill me, insanely enough. Um, yeah, and here's a, you know, the whole drone technology. What do you think of that? Is it just out of control, or I don't know? It scares me. What, what do you, <laughs> what do you guys think? Um, actually, I haven't talked to Huyen. Huyen, what a cute picture. Huyen, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, teacher. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, so I myself just think it's very costly to create like thousands of drones or drones. Or, oh, what yeah. do you call it again? Drones. And send drones, yeah. yeah. Create thousands of drones and send them to another country to kill other people, which is 
senseless to me. It's it's senseless. <laughs> yeah, I think it's costly at first, so I think almost no country would do that, except it is very cheap. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I, I'm not so sure about that. Many countries have no problem spending money in the military. Some countries don't. You're, you're right, but yeah. But uh, what, like, what is the purpose of sending drones to other countries to kill people? Like, I don't, I don't get it. You don't get it. Okay. Well, I'll. I'll Largely, but not exclusively, United States, for example, we're fighting in Afghanistan. I'm sure you're well aware, and and people and people were crossing the border into Pakistan. Okay, hiding, basically. So we would just send a drone to Pakistan to go boom, blow them up. So. Um, Basically, it's just it's a weapon that you can be used from a far distance. No pilot is actually at risk. And talk about very very impersonal warfare. It's all like a video game, I guess. Um, Van, did you have something you wanted to say? Yes, I, I think it's a new uh, new technology. It's a new chain of weapons, so it may uh, be more more common in the future. Uh, yeah. Yes. yes uh, countries and nations will be uh, is more, more them. And uh, I, I think uh, this is a, a way, new way to, uh, to to start a war or something. Yeah. And actually, th I think that's a good point. It's a good way to start a war. Um, <clears throat> When the United States decides that if you're an enemy in any country, we can invade your sovereign airspace uh, and kill somebody who we think is an enemy, I think that's very dangerous indeed and very, uh, yeah, a good way to start a war. Sovereign means uh, belonging to that country. So when I say sovereign airspace, I mean the airspace of up in the sky above that country. Your sovereign rights are your rights in that country. Um, I don't know. Uh, might is right. Yeah, well, it's the age-old argument, isn't it? Actually, I'm reading a book, Russell, and uh, a very interesting book. It's actually science fiction. But anyway, uh, they're arguing about this point. Might is right. And uh, the argument against it is, well, not quite. Uh, the, the proper application of might can get the desired results. The problem is when people use overkill or they, they do way too much. Um, it, it's interesting. What, and what I don't understand, and maybe somebody has an idea here, I don't understand, for example, how does the... How does the United States decide who they're going to murder? There's no other word for it. Who they're going to kill with a drone and who they're not. Why? You know, we have all these problems with North Korea. Yes. Uh, boom! Goodbye, Mr. <laughs> Kim. I mean, I don't know. They seem to decide. But I don't North know what. Korea, North Korea is. is uh is inside the China's uh, domain. So yeah, United okay. States cannot do that. We could say the inside their sphere of influence. Well, yeah, I agree. It's it's a heck of a lot more complicated than I make it. Um, yeah, you're right. Well, right. Can I ask you just just a question, please? Because um, uh, uh, saying I did not understand, I hadn't understand. Uh, is that a new strategy that um, USA will uh, is taking uh, for her foreign uh, affairs, or just uh, this is just um, a public opinion, or uh, what is it? What is this ex exactly? I can't uh, I can't uh, I can't get the the, the, the argument actually. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, it is well as the article I pointed out. They recently gave some actual numbers. Uh, Four thousand seven hundred. What it what it is is we use these unmanned, very small planes. Actually, you know, I remember back when I was a kid, my one of my neighbors had a little remote control plane that he would you know fly around the playground. It's like that, but much larger scale, and obviously with weapons. And they use these drone planes for targeted assassinations. They figure out this through whatever, their spy network, CIA, figures out that um, some guy is a terrorist. Uh, and they figure out by using, uh, maybe through hacking, his accounts. They figure out he's made payments to terrorists. Maybe they figure out where he is by using satellite technology. The next step is they send in a drone and blow up his house and anyone in it. Basically, they're used for targeted assassination. Okay. So it's a new strategy uh, USA is taking uh, for handling this, uh, this problems, right? Yeah, part of the, you know, it all started, you know, the whole war on terrorism. You all know about 911 and all that. And um, very shortly after, the rules of warfare in the United States got loosened significantly. There are many things that by law, in the United States law, they would not be allowed to ever do targeted assassination, for example, before 9-11. I don't... I, whatever 9-11 was hoping to accomplish, it accomplished pretty much the opposite. Because it, it pretty much, American government said all bets are lost, are, are off, no more restrictions. We'll kill you anywhere. There's nowhere to hide. And so the equipment they use are these drones. They send in unmanned, <coughs> unmanned drones, which you know. I don't know what you think. Uh, what do you think, Camilo? What do you think about? Robotic warfare. Really, that's what it is. We're talking about flying robots. <coughs> Camila, are you there? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Camila, but you, it's war. <laughs> but it's war. Did you ever see the... Uh, did you, ever, uh, you guys uh, remember this? I'll be back. Did you ever yeah. see? Okay. Did you ever see that? Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. I don't know how. Yeah, that guy funny. made a career of not acting, keeping a yeah. blank face, being a robot. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. What is this? He made an acting career of not acting. Arnold, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm, I'm, re I, I'm, <laughs> yes. refer I'm referencing the Terminator movies. Uh, yeah. In those movies... Terminator. In, the, in those movies, robots achieve self-awareness and the actual global internet ach achieves self-awareness and uh, obviously all the robots go to war with yeah. the humans. And yeah. th those robots were UFO. They, were, they came from other planets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, the future. The future, yeah, that's the, right. Very good, Van. <laughs> Van's a Terminator fan. Cool. Yeah, actually, they came from the future, so they're like robots from the future, right? Anyway, oh, I mean, okay, is, yeah. is this is this where the world is headed? Is this? Are we gonna have warfare using robots? What? What you, nah, I don't think so. I, yeah, I do. Like Really? Human mind not? will be re will, human mind will remain superior. They will find something that will keep robots in their Hello, class. territory. <laughs> oh my! What the heck is that? Scary. That's me. I'm Elon from Venezuela. Uh, okay. I don't like Check to talk about way. the war. That's <laughs> not my. That's not my favorite topic. You see me? I'm yeah. How were you killed? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> A result of Real modern fast. warfare. 
Scary. 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 He doesn't sound scary? Actually, I agree. He looks scary, but you have a very kind of funny, nice voice, Han. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a kid's voice. <laughs> I'm 24 years old, believe it or not. <laughs> really? You appear to be more like 100. Okay. Maybe this is, this is a little bit more futuristic. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. All right, speaking you have, of... You have to download All right. this application. The name of this application is Crazy Talk. <laughs> you can find it on Google. Crazy Talk. Really? Okay. Oh boy, I'm not looking forward to when all my verbling students are like this. I don't know if I could handle a class full of uh, full of this kind of stuff. Wow, crazy! All right, <laughs> very funny. Okay, uh, what do you think? The um, actually, let me let me talk to. Yeah. Teacher, I really think that I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, the military forces can use as uh, smart. Smart plane. It's not. Yes, it's smart plane. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, they can control and they can uh, send some bombs. You know. Right. Uh, that can occur. I really think that. Well, obviously, yeah, because it's happening now. The United States is already using it. Yeah. Do you think there would ever be a point in the future where? Where people will be just, you know, with a joystick and some buttons, and no, there'll be no humans on the battlefield. It'll be robots against robots. You yeah, think that? I think that will happen. I you think do? that is happening right sure. now. In a in in a little way, I don't I don't know how to say that, but it just start to happen with all the hackers on the web. Okay. All right, so you uh, all right, so you think it's it's actually already begun the cyber cyber wars, cybernetic wars. Yeah, it, it has already begun. Okay, Dina, I, I haven't heard from you for a while. What do you think? Do you think the war is on? <laughs> do you think eventually there will be total robotic warfare? Dina, yes. Are you, you, yes, okay. I, I think so. Is that good or bad? I, think so, but, but, I don't know. War, uh, war in general is bad, but um, I don't know. I, I I haven't too much to say about the subject. Okay. But uh, I think I think that the, the coming wars will be uh, basically uh, without humans. It uh, it will depend on uh, the information, the hacking. The reports, all, mm -hmm. all all of these kinds of things, but yeah. it's not a, it's not a, yes it uh, it will not be like uh, the past wars. Yeah. Okay. I think I think that's a, a definite. I would I would absolutely agree with that. But I I you know I also my opinion is it, it doesn't matter how robotic how much hacking or humans aren't directly involved, I think human beings will suffer anyway. Of course. Um, of course. Right? Um, okay. Uh, Ed Eduardo, what do, you, what do you think? Do you think... Uh, well, I think in, yeah. a, in a part it's is a good because when they are in war, they always uh, invent useful things. Okay, useful things like what? Well, when when the United States was in war, they invented the internet. So when in the times they are always in war. So uh, an advantage of that could be that they could create another thing that it, that it could be useful. Ah, okay. So you're saying that um, warfare technology often. So is often first, but then many useful items are developed yes, from. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I agree with that. It's sad but true. Sad but true. I... Inventions came from war, like the microwave. Microwave. They used it to. Yeah, they use a microwave in a front in a front way. You know, they they I don't know how to say. They shoot a beam to reheat their enemies. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I hear that. <laughs> I don't laugh at that. Why? It's funny. I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking. Oh, that's of, mean. It's Imagine almost. Imagine that. A wall throwing to you laser beams, burning all your skin. That's scary. <laughs> Yeah, it is scary. Actually, it is. But I'm getting ready. In five minutes, when the class is over, I'm gonna microwave a burrito, and I'll be, <laughs> I'll be thinking of you. <laughs> yeah, and then you will be happy. Hey, well, where's your hey, teacher? Where are you from? Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm originally American, but I'm living in the Philippines now. Well, what 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 is the news right now about Pyongyang and the nuclear war? He's he's. Constant. He's saying that he has power, and on the news they're saying that he's going to try a nuclear weapon. Yeah, they are constantly in the news. You know, that's. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. It's very funny because I do a little. I do some private tutoring uh, for Korean students, so I talk to this uh, them about this all the time, and they're just, of course, normal Korean people, and um, their viewpoint is. Actually, I'm always the one telling them information about new developments in North Korea and American position and Jap and government positions and so forth. Actual South Korean people just don't even care. They've heard the threats all their lives since they were small children, and they just completely ignore it. It's like, yeah, North Koreans threatening to kill us all. Sea of fire, sea of fire. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard Sea of Fire about 20 times in my lifetime. Who cares? So what? Big deal. Cool. They, they, yes. Even though they're the ones most threatened, they actually seem to care less <laughs> than anybody that's, else. That's not healthy. I live <laughs> in Venezuela and I'm scared. Uh, yeah. I'm not in that problem. I'm not related to and I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, I, and I actually somewhat I feel the same way. I, I think it's a very frightening situation. Um, but South Koreans, not so much. They they've heard it all their lives. They don't care. They've lived with it all their lives. Actually, it's I don't know. It's a strange thing. It's a little That's unbelievable. Amazing. It's a little shocking to me, but uh, it's true. It's very true. Uh, I guess human beings can get used to anything. I don't know. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, Mariana. Hello, Mariana. Are you there? <laughs> Strange. Okay. I guess. Okay, I think I have an yeah. idea. Uh, this kind of arms should be prohibited all over the world. And uh, the fight should be decided between presidents of the countries. You want that? You want that? Cage match. Yeah, but yeah. only both. Only the president. <laughs> okay, I, I can go for that. I think Obama's in good shape. He's uh, sure. <laughs> he's uh, good to go. I think. Um, yeah, yeah. He's good with his roundhouse kick. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, better yeah, than yeah. kill many civilian persons. Yeah, I, okay. I kind of like that. You know, and the North Korean president, he's kind of fat and chubby. I don't think he could... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think he would do very well. Um, but then, you know, we've got another problem here. Um, for example, the president of South Korea at this time, Ms. Park, uh, is an older woman. I don't... I don't really want to see her fighting with that, with that. Oh, in this camera. case, in this case, she can ask someone to go in place. <laughs> okay, <All laughs> to right. fight for her. Okay, yeah. but this is an only exception. Okay. Actually, that's very similar to my theory. Okay, here's here's my solution and my theory. I have a theory about neckties that businessmen always wear a necktie. Of course, you see, I do not. I try to avoid wearing a tie at all costs. Um, but my theory is that wearing the, the custom, which is now international, of wearing a necktie cuts off the blood circulation to the brain. And that's why uh, so many countries' leaders and international uh, financial 
le leaders of financial institutions. It's my theory that's why they make so many stupid decisions. They're just they're not getting blood to the brain. So that's my uh, my theory is that neckties should be illegal. Uh, so they should fight with neckties. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Very tight. Very tight yeah. around the neck. Here we go. A little cyber war. <laughs> what is this? It should be more interesting, <laughs> more fun. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, that's a possible solution. Anyway, I wasn't kidding about that microwave burrito. I hear it calling me. Oh, please. Eat me. Why are you going to eat that? It's so late. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to go uh, eat it right now. I'm, I'm pretty hungry. Here in the Philippines, it's noon, which means um, thank you very much for participating in this really controversial... Oh, in the Philippines. I didn't know that. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone, for participating. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your dish. Thank you very much for your time, teacher. Yeah, well, thank, thank you all, but uh, it's time to go. It's burrito time, so I'm checking out. Burrito time. Excellent. Right on. Okay. All right, see you guys. Take care. Have a great day.